live from Liverpool. We need to talk about ghosts. Patreon podcast with Kevin Eustace. What was that you heard? You collectively say, "Well, yes, you did indeed." Here it's a Patreon podcast because I've literally just recorded this week's Patreon podcast with Rebecca, and we had a chat about it. And I said, you know what, before we put out this weekend's full episode, which is a lovely interview with one of our listeners all the way from New Jersey, yes, I thought, you know what would be nice? I'm going to show what the other guys who aren't Patreons are missing each and every week. So I thought, as a little treat, as a little bonus, before this weekend's episode comes out, I would also upload an old Patreon episode for you guys to listen to. And why not? Don't forget, if you want to be a Patreon and listen to one of these extra each week, go over to patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts. It's quite simple. Patreon.com forward slash we need to talk about ghosts and five dollars a month get you an extra four shows, all of the posts, all of that jazz. Anyway, I'll speak to you again this weekend with our wonderful interview with Laurie all the way from New Jersey. New Jersey! And in the meantime, as a little bonus, former Patreon episode. I love you all. Teddy, bye bye. Okay, it's uh, time for a Patreon special episode. Hooray! Hooray! I'm here with the lovely Rebecca, who needs to speak up slightly, but that's okay. Hello. Um, so, we, last week on the Patreon episode, if you recall, um, we discussed divination, didn't we? We did. And the fact that I have a pendulum that you bought me. Yeah. Much against your better, better judgment. And as you will have seen, if you've seen the Patreon videos we've just put up, as we promised last week, we said we'd give it a go. And we've just given it a go, haven't we? We have, yeah. Highly successful. Not we pulled out the pendulum. Um, I, re- I studied a video. That video that I watched might not have been accurate, though, either. On how to use it. Well, the fact it said you had to program a well, gem yeah. is close. <laughs> yeah, but you do... I kind of get that, so that you understand what you're looking for. Um, and then we had a little session of asking a stupid questions because I don't know the answer. But it did say it was going to do something in the flat, uh, didn't it? Yeah, it did it say that. Lied to you about other things. But then it was unable to locate an Aldi receipt under some coasters. Which, to be fair, it's a bit of a mundane task to ask the dead, isn't it? So maybe that's why. Maybe it was fuck off. Hang on, I tried to get nail this down the video. Who were we asking? I thought we were asking the thing itself. In that case, it's not. No, that's just one of the dead. I mean, gems aren't alive, are they? Well, then who were you asking? Um, the spirit that's controlling the gem. Cars aren't alive, are they? But if a car hit you, you'd know about it. What? What are you? God, you have no logic. <laughs> it's, <laughs> that's perfect logic. No, it's not. That's exactly what I said to you in the video. Who? Like, who are you asking the gem itself? And you said yes. That's why when you were like, oh, it's a different spirit, I said, well, what is there like a whole host of spirits in there? Like, that's why I made that joke about there being a little spirit family. Well, there's not a little spirit family, and it wasn't a very good joke. Well, so, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to get to the bottom, and you're changing. You're like, now it's someone who's, now it's the under, or now it's the dead answering. Like, make your mind up, who's this spirit? The dead. Of course, it's always the dead, Becca. When are you going to find, <laughs> they're going to understand. <laughs> but you didn't say it was the dead, you said it was the. Well, it's the pendulum, but it's, it's, oh, right, okay, we're going around in circles, yeah. Much like the pendulum. Um, nonsensical sense. Unless sentence. you're not ready for Unless you're not ready for the answer. I know, yeah, that's a bit patronised, isn't it? I'm a 40 year old man. I think <laughs> I can take it. Whatever you've you got can, to offer. You think you can. Um, but yesterday we were talking and we said we'll save this for the podcast. Because I was talking to um, a woman in work mm-hmm. who has the strangest belief that we're very close friends, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's, I'm all right with her, but we're not as, you know, she makes it like we're besties and whatnot. Anyway. Long story short, she's a believer in lots of things as well, isn't she? Yes. So. It's probably why she thinks she's such kindred spirits. It probably is why she thinks we're kindred spirits. But she was talking about the guy. She's got a, a, her best friend, basically, is a medium, by all accounts. And he often reads her for charge. <laughs> like, he charges 30 quid a go. Not cheap, yeah. Not cheap, especially at mates rates. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's besotted with him that he's definitely telling the truth. Right. Anyway, I was telling you a story that she was telling me yesterday, and there was a sticking point where we both found rather funny. Mm-hmm. And it was because she told me that last week her medium had got in touch with her and said, I've just had a message come through from the other side. You need a reading. Brilliant. That is, in fairness, that is a fantastic business model. So just mm. like any time you need customers, you ring them and say, you need me now. I know this. You need to come exactly. and pay me. But she's, it's about that time of month. 
Yeah, but exactly. Don't get paid till Tuesday. (laughs) But she then said, she then she said very quickly, "Oh, he didn't take any payment for it." But I thought, no bollocks, he definitely did, or you definitely at least offered him something. But then it got me thinking of that business model. Let's say, let's say, let's live in the land where that's real, right? right? And he definitely has a gift and he can talk to the dead and he can pass messages on and all that. Mm-hmm. But he wants to make a living from it. Yeah. So he charges, right? Now, arguably, you could say you can't put a price on contacting the dead, <laughs> which is fair enough. Because okay. if it was genuine, I think he's got a right to charge £3,000 a pop. Mm-hmm. But let's say he charges £30 and that's what he wants to charge. Fair enough. Whatever he wants to do. But then let's say... Is it then ethical if he does genuinely receive a message from someone mm. who says, like, let's call her Brenda. Tell our Brenda I need to speak to her. Should he then ring her up and say, if it's all legit, are you Brenda, listen, your Barbara's on the phone. Oh, well, not on the phone. <laughs> your Barbara's in me head. She's got a message for you, but, you know, I'm 30 quid a pop. Is that legit? Would that be not legit? Is that morally reprehensible or is that okay? I don't know, I think you'd need to have a word, I mean, you've confused me now with the names, but I think you need to have a word with the ghost, who's, like, why are you going through this well, maybe, guy who's co- costing money, are you going to see yourself? Well, maybe he's a conduit. Maybe he's the telephone line. This is it. So, like, like it's, let's say if, the, if psychicism, psychicism, if psychicness was real, um, and we had a psychic next door, and I was in the Outer Hebrides, and wanted to get in touch with you, but didn't have a phone. I could go, like, Jeff, in my mind. Jeff, right, don't honest, tell Becca. so long-winded, so I switched off a little bit there. But then again, that said, if I was in desperate need to contact you and Jeff knocked the ear and went, I'm going to need 20 quid off here, I'm afraid, or you'll never <laughs> find out what, what he's saying. Yeah, then. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, if it's that important, surely just as it, especially as he's her friend, he would want to get the message to her anyway. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. That is a very good point. Like, let's say you weren't here and your phone rang and I answered it and it was your family and you were like, oh... Pass this message on to Kev for us. I wouldn't charge any of you for it, you know. I would yeah. gladly tell you. I mean, I was tempted as well because I've also got, as you know, the crystal ball and the tarot cards. I was tempted to get you to film me for 15 minutes looking at the crystal ball. Yeah, but that would be no fun for anyone, would it? No. no. Unless there's a way that I can make that fun, like by saying what I see. Where are getting your cape out? I don't have a cape. That's dead <laughs> funny that, that you thought I was a magician. Well, not a magician, a tit. Um... <laughs> I could do your tarot one week. Yeah, not now. Not now, no, not now. To be fair, this is going to be a shorter podcast anyway because the video aspect is half of this week's podcast for patrons. Um, so this is the audio... What would you just call it? Accompanying the audio. The accompanying audio for that video. Apart from it's not because we're talking about something different. We are, but we're still talking about divination and contacting the dead and getting messages from them. So it's all under yeah. the umbrella. Anyway, get back to the story. Um... That was it, really, the story. Well, what we was the stopped message? there. Uh, oh, um, oh, yeah, that's a good point. What was the message? Um, oh, it wasn't a message. That was what I was telling you. Yeah, somebody. So yes, somebody had got in touch with him through the veil and said, "Tell Barbara she needs to come for a reading." But the better thing was, it wasn't for a reading. It was to be regressed, like split into a past life. Yes, so that's when the shutters came down for me because it was like, right, like, well, not that they were already up, but so he rang her. He said, "Listen, you need to, you need to have an appointment with me here, you know." And then when they've got there, it's it, he's done a past life regression with her. So, like, who sent this message? You, yeah, who's who's interested in her having done a past life regression other than her? You know, it, what yeah. what spirit was this? You said there was no message. There was nothing coming through. There was no one. Saying anything in particular, it was just they've gone, she's done this and then she's come on. See, well, this is the thing with like past life regression. I've got a bit of a belief that it could be real, but only on the basis that um, genetic memory is a real thing. So I think you could be regressed to your great great grandmother's life and know things about it because genetic memory is a real thing, which they've kind of proven with rats. Mm. So I think you could do that. But as happened in her case, when somebody says, like, you know, oh, I'm John F. Kennedy, I'm sat in the car. Oh, what's happened to me, Ed? It's like, well, there's no, there's no link there. Yeah. So I don't believe in that. That's... Also, I certainly don't believe in any urgency of, quick, you need to come for a reason now, 30 quid. <laughs> <laughs> 30 quid, I'm going to yeah. tell you. So do you know what she was told? What was she told? She was told that, um, I kind of don't want to take the piss out of it, so I, but it is dead funny. <laughs> 
But, but she she was told. She said to me, do you, "Hey, do you remember? I've always told you that I've had this dream that um, I've got. I've, I can't really say in case people know her. Right. So I'll change it a bit. Okay. Has she always told you about this dream? No, I can't remember. If she has, I can't remember ever telling me. So let's say she said, "Remember, I, I told you I've had this dream that um, I keep I grow tomatoes. I'm going to go to the greenhouse. Um, they're all dead because I forgot to water them, and they're dying. But then I water them, and they're all right. And I went, yeah." That's not the dream. I'm trying to, in case... Because you're never going to listen to this, but you never know. Um, so she went... This, this really isn't that heavily coded, guys. <laughs> it's really not. And this is changing slight, very slight things. So then, she's, I will say this part. She says... Um, she goes, anyway, it turns out uh, I was in the Vietnam War. And I'm obviously right. keeping a straight face, so I said... I mean, the Vietnam War was relatively, relatively recent. Relatively recent, so there's no... Fact, she might have been alive. Yeah, so there's, she will have been alive. <laughs> but she was but just Possibly, alive. yeah. That's a very good point, yeah. I should, I'm going to figure that out, so I think she was. So um, so she went, I was in the Vietnam War. It's a fucking cracking point, that. So she says, um, I was in the Vietnam War. I went, was she? Yeah, it was Vietnamese. All right, okay. Which also has to be, which shoots down the genetic memory thing for me. Um, it was Vietnamese. Um, yeah, you're right, unless she's half Vietnamese. Exactly, yeah. And, and uh, I had a family of four kids, and we starved to death. I went, oh, really? All right. Um Bloody hell. Is this what you're seeing in your regressive memory thing? She went, yeah. And then this is the bit that I thought, nah, do one. Because she went, um, oh, yeah, and I just remember being in our hut. She said, and we were looking out um, with the kids. She went, and um, and the sky was full of, and this is the bit that got me. She went, oh, what are them things called? What are them things called? We were calling them choppers. And I went, Helicopters. Do you helicopters, yeah? Because uh, you're like, so absorbed yeah, in this exactly, progression yeah. that you can't even remember the modern name for things. Yeah, and, and like, you know, I didn't want to say, you weren't calling well, them choppers, because why were you speaking English? Yeah, well, I was going to say, what's the Unless, Vietnamese literally, you were speaking choppers. in Vietnamese, but you translated it into English in your head, and you were using a Vietnamese slang term for helicopters, which equates to choppers. None of this makes sense. And as Becca just very much pointed out, there's a high chance you were alive <laughs> during the Vietnamese War. I mean, then again... You know, her and her family might have starved to death and she was instantly born. There might have been not that much of a crossover. It would be quick, like, wouldn't it? It would be quick. It would be very quick. It would be very, Especially very getting quick. all the way from Vietnam to here. It's not It's not a short distance. Well, no, but I mean, you know, we could go down the whole Buddhist route of... Is it Buddhist where they reckon that when you die, you're born somewhere else? No, I know it's called reincarnation, but there's a specific thing of like, as you close your eyes and you go down that tunnel of light... When you come out the tunnel of light, you're coming out of your mother's legs, sort of thing. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah, but it is a bit of a way to travel. And also, I bet you... Right, and here's another thing, actually. This Vietnamese woman, God bless her soul, um, there's no way on earth that she was... Because she was... Barbara was making out that her and the kids were literally acting like they'd seen a dragon when they'd seen this chopper. Right. Like, did you know what a helicopter is? Do you know what I mean? It was the 70s. Yeah. There's, helicopters have been long in existence. It's not like she was looking with bewilderment going, those men are in the sky in a metal bird. But anyway, so yeah, that was that. Yeah, so what are what do we think really are the morals of someone taking charge? Taking charge? This is, it's an interesting point because I do remember but I watched a panel. You know, remember Panorama, the BBC One programme? Yes. There was one on psychics, and it was one of the best programmes on the world of the spooky that I've ever seen. Because what they'd done is um, they interviewed TV psychics, but they actually got a woman. It was like it was very serious and, and very real. They got a woman whose son had been stabbed to death in a gang fight, oh. or a street fight, and she was beside herself, and she literally went to every psychic under the sun in the hope of getting a message from, from him. So you know, so they were trying to point out the manipulation that can go on in it. Yeah, absolutely. Like literally tax and grief. Yeah, because she obviously at that point she's at the point where she'd pay anything to mm. to have this. Yeah, exactly. It's awful. And so they got the TV psychics because you know a, a footballer on the TV is a good footballer, a boxer on the TV is a good boxer. So arguably, a psychic who's made it to TV is a good psychic. He's got some renown, or she's got some renown. Reminds you of this next time you see some. Clown on TV. Hey, Kev, if they're on TV, they must be good. I thought you should. Yeah. But anyway, um, they got this, they got Colin Fry. He's dead now. But they got Colin Fry, this TV psychic, who's one of these, hello, my love, 
like he does it. He does what they call clairaudience, which is um, clairvoyant. The clair part of clairvoyant, clairaudience means you do it in front of an audience, basically, and yeah. it's um, you wear messages through a group. But it's bollocks. It's basically guessing. So it's like, oh, right, can, you, yeah. can you stand up if you've had someone who's died in the last twelve months? Uh, so fifty people stand up. Mm. Um, it's a male that's with me. Ten sit down. He said he's had trouble with his heart. Ten sit down. Yeah. And by the time you've got to the one, everyone's convinced that you, you're great. Yeah, and you've already got a fair amount of information. Yeah, information about right it. where you haven't. You've just threw darts. Mm. Um, so they have him on, and she's obviously a real life beside self person. It's in a private room, and he goes, "Can he ask? Is there anything to do with the bicycle, my love?" And she's like, "No." It's like, right, did... Um, and anyway, he gets everything wrong. Right. And she comes out and she's like, I'm really disappointed. I had high hopes. Oh. Um, and then she sees another guy, um, another TV psychic, I think Colin Stockwell, um, who's got uh, had like a programme on UK Living. And again, he's he gets a little bit better. He's like, um, I'm, are young boys with me? And she's like, right, okay. But then he gets everything else wrong. And she's like, right. And then she's even more disappointed because she's like, I thought we got somewhere. Mm. Um, and then the, on the documentary, the fella's saying... Um, Colin Fry and thingy, the other fella, he said they charge like up to two thousand pounds for a private room <gasps> because the TV psychics oh, and people gosh. pay it. Um, he said, and he said, you know, and just and this like this was now ninety percent of the documentaries done. Mm. And right at the end, it was brilliant the way they done it. Right at the end, they went. Um, we got in touch with the spiritualist church and explained what exactly where we were up to um, and what we where we'd been. Um, and they put us in touch with a barber in Scotland who works for the Spiritualist Church. Nice. Doesn't take a single bit of, bit of money off anyone. Mm-hmm. And he's a barber. Um, he says, and we arranged for, for her to go and see him at his barber shop in Scotland. Um, and she went in. He, he said, the only thing... Did she get a haircut? No, she got a short... Well, yeah, she got a perm. No, she didn't. Um, and he was, he was like, oh, hello. And like, just a dead normal fella, like, do you want a cup of tea? She was like... And the, and the director saying like you don't so you don't take any payment. He went no. Why would it? It's immoral for me to. I'm just passing passing messages on. Mm. Anyway, he's literally like in the first five minutes. He's like, got, right. He, she doesn't say a word, and he's like a young boy's just stepped behind you. Um, he's got light brown hair. He's holding his, his chest. Did he have a wound to his chest? So that I can see blood pouring out of his chest. Oh my god! And she's like, yeah, he was stabbed in the chest. Um, and he's like, oh. and he he absolutely. She comes out and she's chuffed. Do you know what I mean? She's got, she spoke to him, if you like, which is when this sort of stuff works for me. Yeah, I, I was going to say, what was like, what was the message? What was she after? What was going to give her? That he was all right. right. That he wasn't tormented in the afterlife. Well, I certainly hope that fella didn't position it to it. He's got blood pouring out of him. Then no, it was better than that. But you know, you, you, you do that for validation, don't you? Mm. To say like, but I think that's when it works. I, I don't care to a point if it exists or it doesn't. I think as long as the person who's delivering that reading believes in what they're saying. And if the person getting the reading gets some comfort from it, then there's no harm. I don't. Yeah, think. I do. I do agree with you on that. But on the other side of that coin, I think it's absolutely disgusting. Even if they do it completely and it's fulfilled, and she comes away with loads of comfort, I think charging a grieving mother two thousand pounds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to give her that comfort, even if it worked, is like just shocking. I don't know how you could. Hold your hand out and take the money from it. No, I, I, I completely agree. But don't you find it interesting that they were the ones who were charged and they didn't get anything right? And there's a guy who didn't charge, which kind of automatically for me, it doesn't even just add an authenticity to it. It adds, it loses the the, uh, the visceral fight of whether this is real or not. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like. Yeah, because you do think, like, all right, well, if he's not getting paid for it, what's in it for him? Like, why would he lie, I suppose? But that, I suppose like, they've got, obviously, a huge motive, motivation. But you're, you're, a, you're a key person to say this about because you 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 do have a, a quite a large bit of altruism about you, like, you know, without blowing your trumpet to Patreons. You know, you give you donate out your wages to charities and stuff and all that kind of things. But So you're kind of a good candidate for this. So let's say you, let's say tomorrow you woke up and... You knew you didn't think you were going mad before you say. It. I just think it was going mad. <laughs> right. Um, you knew you could you could speak to the dead. Yeah. Right? And one of the members of the dead said, "Like your next door neighbour, John is my son. I want you to knock and tell him this." Hmm. Right. Let's say you, and let's say you were comfortable with that with delivering that. Yeah. Right. You would you find it morally reprehensible to charge? In that case, yeah, certainly like. 
do your colleagues, friends ringing them and saying, I've got this message, 30 quid if you want to hear it. Mm. That's like shocking. I would never knock on his door and say, I've got this message. It's 40 quid if you want to hear it. You know, mm. uh, like half an hour with me is this much or whatever. Like that's pretty terrible, I think, yeah. I suppose I can see how, and obviously this is on the basis that, as you've said, I'm accepting all this and believing it. I can see how you would think, all right, I do, I need to make a living, you know, I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to do this full time instead of working, you would charge for that and people come to you and they would pay. So you could understand how psychics tend to work these days. Yeah. Yeah. You can understand making some money in that respect, but I think almost like cold calling people yeah. is like not acceptable. Um, no, and, and obviously, you know, and then there's a limit on it there as well. I think there should be, you know, I think for... One, frankly, I think you need to like be looking at... I think your pay structure needs to be very flexible because it's not right. Say you do wacky prices up to those ridiculous extremes of £2,000 for half an hour. It's not then right that the only people you bring in comfort to are rich people mm. and poor people who haven't got that kind of money to be spending. You're not getting the message to them. I think that's disgusting. So yeah. I think you can... There's an element of taking it from who can afford it and taking a smaller amount from those who can't and... And then certainly, like, if you've got, like, grieving parents or something, like, for God's sake, just give them the message, like, how horrendous to, to consider doing otherwise, whether they can pay you or not. You know what we should do? Seriously. What? We should both go one night, not this week because we're busy, but maybe the week after, to the Spiritualist Church. Which Spiritualist Church? There's a Spiritualist Church by the Royal. What do you mean? What do they do? A Spiritualist you... Church? This, that yeah. sounds... Slightly oxymoronic to me, no? No, no, because it's spiritual church believe in God. And I had a good description of it the other day, because I've been a couple of times, ages ago. Um, but a spiritualist church is basically like a Catholic church, hmm. or a Christian church. But at the end of their mass, they have a, a guest speaker on who does clear audience. What, so it's like Christians, but they also believe in ghosts? Yeah. Hmm. So what they do is, they, I think they have like two services a week. So you go, there's a mass part, which is not really a mass as such, for about 20 minutes. Mm. And then there's like an hour worth of this person doing that exact... It's, who's got John? Sort of thing. So it's, right. it's kind of like a free medium mm. set up. You pay like three quid entry or something. Yeah. Do you fancy it? Yeah, yeah, by all means we'll go. Because I think it would be... It'd certainly be interesting from my side to go, because obviously I'm not as open to that in the way I don't think we're going to go there and they're going to get anything mm. but in fairness if someone turned around and said something about me you know I'd... that no one else, no one else knew yeah exactly you'd, you'd kind of be open to that but then but then the guess who thing is like part of the problem isn't definitely it? I mean, yeah. like everyone has got a granddad who's died just that, you know it's yeah. just like when you it, and there's also the Barnum thing. statements thing isn't there which is yeah anything you say about yourself can be normally reflected to the person you're speaking to yeah like as in, you're in a job you don't really like, you find it stressful at times, you know. You've always thought that you you could be creative in, in an outlet and make money that way, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Statements that apply to everyone. Darren Brown done it, didn't he, when he gave everyone a private reading. Mm. Told them to all open the envelopes, and when they did, they all had the exact same reading, although they all rated it like 95% accurate yeah, at the time. Yeah. So yeah, we should do that. Like next week, I'll look at when it's on and we'll go. It's only the top of the road. Okay. We maybe can go to Paddy's afterwards. If you're lucky. Then I'm in. Thought as much. By the way, Paddy's is a proper dive bar on London Road, which Becca's in love with. It's not even like a dive bar as in how you'd think of it like a bit cool, a bit rock. It's like not even like no. that. It's like just a proper album. It's a proper bar. Irish like bar. Like they've got like the racing on, yeah. like long, thin, sticky floors, dirty yeah, pen glasses. Yeah. yeah. Like. That's, they think like they've they cleaned the toilet if there's a urinal cake in it. Yeah. That sort of place. Oh, I it's all right. We had the cockroach infestation. That was terrible. Exactly, yeah. A cockroach. They're over that and, and the fact you say, do you remember that time they had it? Because they stayed open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd be sitting there in the bar and it'd be like slapping the bar trying to get them. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that was only one time though. It's clean now. It's been clean for years. Define clean. <laughs> no cockroaches. Yeah. It's a sort of bar which happened with your ex-boyfriend actually, didn't it? Or which were actually mates, who were actually mates with. Mm. But it's a sort of bar that you can just go in and say, we're having a party here. <laughs> and put your own banners up and no one stops you. You just have a party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that was largely because they knew him. Well, that's largely because he's an alcoholic. Well, yeah, he hears her all the time. I introduced him to that bar and he's proper round with it. He goes there on his own, I know, he, like, like, yeah, it, like, defines him now. He's a young, good-looking lad. He won't lad, a bit anymore go... that I talk about. He, would, he used to hate going there. But he'll be there for, like, 11 in the morning, morning. Well, 
No, I don't. He'll, he'll go on his own. He's thing. a functioning alcoholic. Yeah. No, I'm not saying anything bad about that. Fair play to him, but he's not a functioning alcoholic. He fucking honest. is. He's not. He is. He's not. Let's. It's I mean, extreme. we won't say his full name, but let's say let's say his name's <laughs> Jeff Steed. There's literally a phrase amongst your friends saying to do a Jeff Steed. That means when you've had too much to drink. Yeah, but that's him. <laughs> yeah, but it's every not, day. It's not every day. Behave yourself every day, as if only weekends. Anyway, um, so this is the end for the um, Patreon podcast because you've you've got twenty three minutes here, twenty four minutes now, and you've got the two videos. Next week we'll do another one, and the week afterwards, well, we should have been to the Spiritualist Church by then, so we'll give you a report on that. Yeah. So that's fun, isn't it? Yeah. Say so thank you, Kevin. You're a wonderful backup. <sighs> Just say it. Just right. say what? Say thank you to the Patreon. Why am I thanking you? Because I, I'm wonderful. Thank you for leading this. Yeah. Say so, all right. Say thank you to the patrons. Then. Thank you, patron. Oh, thank you, certainly. Okay. Thank you, patrons. Um, say Kevin is the best. Why would I say that? Because it's truth. Absolute child. I know. I'm joking. Um, Sphinxes as well. Sphinxes as well. Sphinxes as well. I think I've fallen for anything like that. No, and I don't think anyone wants to listen to me trying to fool you into things like that. So marry me then. No, thank you. Ah, oh, see, you nearly married me then. You, you just <laughs> lost out. You just me. lost out. Um, okay, thanks, Patreon. We'll speak to you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>